Uh, thank you so much for being here today. I am just very grateful that Interact gave me the opportunity to present this amazing workshop. Uh, I'm gonna pull back the curtain and share a lot of information for you. So definitely bring a notebook, get a bevy, and uh, let's do this. And um, okay, so we are going to talk about, so because this is with Interact, the majority of you are interested in creating a quiz, but if you don't have a quiz yet and you have a PDF download, I'll use the term freebie instead of quiz occasionally uh, to, you know, when we talk about your nurture series and following up your opt-in. Today, we're gonna talk about how to warm up your audience to build your know, like, and trust factor. So let's get started. Okay, I just pushed it to go forward. <laughs> And it's like, okay, there. Oh, great. <laughs> I'm like, all right, what is a nurture series uh, or a welcome series? I believe the term is the same thing, but it is a series of five or more emails that are sent out immediately after someone opts in by taking your quiz or freebie. Now, you could probably have more emails. It just depends on your offer and how expensive your offer is at the end. So if you're Amy Porterfield or Marie Forleo, you're gonna have a longer nurture series than just five emails because their offers are a lot bigger. <laughs> so why does your customer need a nurture series versus going straight into your weekly newsletters? When someone takes your quiz, the lead is coming in hot. So your customer wants to hear from you, believe it or not. And so it's really important to take advantage and build your relationship when they first discovered you and want to hear more from you. So I'll tell you just a little bit about myself. I am Linda Sudu, a list building expert and Pinot Noir lover. I love uh, the Erath wine from Oregon. If anybody knows that wine, let me know, but it's one of my favorites. And I help entrepreneurs create irresistible personality quizzes that bring in new subscribers on autopilot. In addition to creating quizzes that convert new leads to, or I'm sorry, that convert views to new leads at 60%, I help online business owners learn how to take full advantage of email marketing. And that includes uh, knowing what to do with your nurture series. Uh, and you can catch me at home on my to balance out my day and spending lots of time with my son, Liam, my husband, Justin, and our new puppy, Dakota, who's a lot of fun. <laughs> so believe it or not, 50% of business owners um, don't have a nurture series. So there's 50% that currently do not have one and no judgment whatsoever. I'm just curious, do you have one or not? Are you here today to, um, revamp what you currently have or are you here because you don't have one at all and you're ready to take on that task and Jess I can't see any of the comments by the way either so I don't know if you see anything adding, um lots of yeses a few no's um Tina says I need to create one Megan says I have one but haven't updated it since I added my subscription boxes it's a good time to write a new one um nice yeah i feel like we have a good mix of both people have one people don't have one or they do have one but they want to revamp or update it yeah and that's so common so thank you for sharing and there's two really powerful quotes that i wanted to share about a nurture series and one is from WordStream, that a nurture series is incredibly effective on average 320 percent more revenue is attributed to them on a per email basis than other promotional emails. And most of us know who Jenna Kutcher is, and she did quote in one of her uh, podcasts that um, when a person opens your welcome emails, they are 40% more likely to open your emails for the next 180 days. So the purpose of a nurture series, the thing is, when someone opts into your list with a freebie or if they take your quiz, they actually forgot that they did that. So they're caught up in the moment. They might not know who you are. It's important to greet your new leads and build your know, like, and trust factor the minute that they are introduced to you. And this email series statistically has the highest open rates. 
and it introduces them to you, allowing you to share your story, create a connection, and overcomes their objections. And this is really important because maybe someone took your quiz, but they're not the right ideal client. So when I say it overcomes their objections and enables you to offer value in your area of expertise, if they're not if they're not your ICA, your ideal client, then the welcome series also helps you get rid of those people off of your list. And that's important. So what to think about before you write your nurture series. This is quite a big task. And I remember when I first wrote my first welcome series, I was very nervous. Uh, but the more you do it, the better you get. So I just recommend you just go for it and uh, take the energy from today and just crank it out as soon as possible. But there are a few things you need to think about. So one big thing is knowing your customer by conducting ideal client research before you write your nurture series. When you have the voice of customer, you can gain more knowledge, uncover pain points, and you can better serve them. I know when I first did my ICA research, um, it actually kind of gave me a red flag that maybe I wasn't uh, going after the right ideal client. So you uncover a lot of information. And one of the big things that you need to uncover is their pain points that are going to allow you to offer tips. So I'm going to stop right there for a minute and just ask you, no judgment again, how often do you conduct ICA research? So ideal client avatar research. Do you, have you never done it? Do you do it a couple times a year? Do you only do it when you have a new offer coming out and you're trying to get the voice of customer um, honed in, or do you conduct ICA research frequently? And Jessamyn, you can probably, you see the comments coming through, let me know what they're saying. But as people are commenting, I just wanna let you know that I started out by doing ideal client research sporadically, but now I actually have a survey on my welcome series. So now I actually have it on automation, which is really nice. So I'm basically conducting ICA research frequently to better understand my clients. Nice. Yeah, we're getting Kelly Morris says frequently. You guys are so fast at typing. <laughs> we're getting ongoing, ask for feedback all the time. I've done it once and have revisited a few times and edited slightly. There's a few people that are totally new to this. They're just starting, which is awesome. I will say, I'm not even going to lie, I didn't know what ICA research was until I met you, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a pretty cool thing and Linda actually kind of let me into a little bit of how she does it and I was just I was like wow this is actually awesome it's so important and now even with workshops and you know figuring out what our own customers need I think it's super important to do and start doing as well yeah it's really important and I a lot of times when I talk to clients and we go back to ICA research whether they're writing a quiz or um, they're coming up with a welcome series, they kind of hate that I bring it up, <laughs> but it is so important. Um, and then actually when they finally go back to do it, they're always thanking me for encouraging them to do it because they really do find out a lot of great information. Mm -hmm. So before you write your welcome series, if you've never conducted research, definitely make this a priority this week before you move forward because you're going to be able to use the voice of customer, the pain points, and it'll help you write the welcome series a lot faster. Mm -hmm. So if you've never done ideal client avatar research before, there's certain ways you can do it. So you can interview five to eight ideal clients. If you're really gun ho about this, definitely interview more. You can send an email out to some clients with a few questions. But when I first did my ICA research, I set up six calls on a Monday, a half hour a piece and crank them out in three hours. And what I revealed, again, blew my mind and it almost made me realize that I wasn't focusing on the right ICA. So that told me a lot and it changed my business. But you know what it did is it allowed me to slow down, but it also allowed me to move faster to where I wanted to go because I took the time to slow down. That's how I did that. But there's a lot of people who don't want to get in contact with clients. Um, maybe they don't have clients to talk to. So here's a few other ways to consider. You can search Facebook groups. Uh, for example, if I'm trying to find research on quizzes, I can search the magnifying uh, glass in a Facebook group and just type quiz. 
whether it's like a boss moms group or something like that, and just kind of see what people are saying, what questions they're asking. You'll get a lot from doing that if you don't want to talk to anyone. And then, of course, if you uh, want to check out Amazon book reviews, if you have a niche that's similar to a book out there, that's a great way is to check out their reviews and see what they're saying. So those are some pointers. Okay, so now that you've done the ICA research and you're sitting down ready to take on this challenge, these are the things that you wanna think about. You wanna to write to only one person. Uh, oftentimes people actually have a person in mind. I always joked around and said my person was Ashley. She's blonde, she's got three kids and she's a business owner trying to juggle it all, right? So when I sit down, I think about Ashley and what she needs me to say to her to help her understand that I can help her achieve the results that she's looking for. Uh, so think of one person. Then you need to know your brand voice. Be clear, what do you stand for? What do you stand against? Be consistent. You wanna make sure you have a plan. So if you're on this, if you're lucky enough to get into the uh, workshop today, then take this plan I'm gonna go over with an outline here in a few minutes. And that will be your plan. You'll have an idea of a structure for each email that you can write and um, have an outline ready to go before you write everything out. Touch on your customer's pain points. And of course, I just mentioned those will be uncovered in your research. And then one huge thing is you have to know your offer. So where is your lead magnet, your welcome series heading towards? What offer are you gonna offer your clients to follow up these two important pieces. So you have to hone in on your offer and know that ahead of time so you know what to write in your email series and also what kind of freebie or quiz you need to create if you haven't thought about that piece yet either. So the strategy behind a compelling nurture series. So we're gonna, even though you can do more than five emails, I'm just gonna take the five emails right now and use this as a base because that's the average that people would write and this is what most business owners go with this type of plan so email one is where you deliver the quiz results uh, so that's the first email they're going to get is the results from your quiz or the freebie that they um, downloaded email two is where you validate your new leads i definitely recommend you to validate your new customer before you ever introduce yourself also remind them about the quiz or the freebie that they downloaded. Next, email three is where you introduce yourself and offer street credit on why you're the expert. This is where you can share fun facts, um, you know, the Pinot Noir thing that I just mentioned. Really what it does is it builds connection with your audience and it allows people who know the ERAF wine that I was talking about to reach out and say, hey, like this is, you know, this is the wine I drink, how ironic. Yeah, so email three is where you introduce yourself and offer street credit on why you're, you're the expert and they should be following you. Email number four is where you serve your audience with testimonials and tips. Testimonials are really important. And if you were able to catch my personality workshop, uh, we went into why certain personalities really love testimonials. So um, everybody likes a testimonial. They like to see that you've given a proven system to help somebody get from A to B. So testimonials and tips in your fourth email. Email number five, you wanna offer next steps on how to work with you. Yes, it's okay to sell in this email. Now, before we get into the structure of each email, I do wanna mention when I did my ICA research, I was blown away to, found out, to find out that people actually didn't know how to write an email. Uh, and you know, honestly, I was already past that point, so I didn't see that coming, but there was a time where I didn't know what to write in an email either. So if you're in this situation where you really don't know how to write an impactful email, don't be afraid that, or don't feel bad. That was the one thing I heard from my clients that they, did, they wanted more information on. So I wanna go ahead and go over that real quick here. When you write an email to someone, uh, this is my framework. I share a story. Oftentimes I like to start in the middle of the action. So if we were going to the airport and we were getting ready to take a flight, instead of talking about all the steps ahead of time, I might start in the action where I say, run. My husband says, run, because we were almost late to catch our flight. When you can do something like that and start in the middle of the action, you really hook the readers in. And that's what you wanna do. You wanna have fun with your emails, you wanna share stories and um, make, it, make it fun. 
you want to evoke emotion. A lot oftentimes people will buy on emotion and how they feel or how you make them feel. So add some emotion to it. Include one call to action, be specific and give details, and then add a PS at the bottom. You would be surprised at how many people actually just scroll past your email and look at the PS to see what the main point was. So make sure when you add a PS, it's something important or a call to action or something you really want them to see. Uh, so we are gonna get into email one. So this is where you deliver your quiz results. I think it's really important if you've created a quiz to actually have the subject line be super clear where you say quiz results. You know your, and then name of the quiz, what's next. People wanna see their results back, so it's really important that you're clear and you're not being fancy with the subject line. Be very clear on this one. Deliver their quiz results and welcome them into your inner circle. Remind them who you are, what they can expect from you, what you stand for, what you stand against, and how often they'll hear from you. And then you wanna thank them uh, and also add a call to action. I'll show you what it looks like in real time when you put it together. Well done. You sailed through that quiz. You just discovered, and then you insert what they discovered. <laughs> and I'm so excited to have you as part of my community. I appreciate your support. Now you'll always be the first to know whenever we have promotions or new offerings. I plan on connecting with you at least twice a month. I'm excited to serve you and I will only send you things that you'll love. Very simple. This is the easiest email to write of the five. So if you can sit down and get that one done, then you're gonna have your confidence boosted right away and you're gonna be able to take on email two, which we're gonna get to right now validating your new customer and reminding them about the quiz they took. So again, you wanna remind your new lead who you are. They probably are busy and forgot that they took your quiz or downloaded their freebie. You wanna address a pain point to validate them and let them know they're in the right place. So again, if I'm validating my new ICA or my new lead, a good thing to use uh, would be, you know, something about the emails and how to write emails, letting them know that, hey, like a lot of people have the same issue. Then you wanna offer a solution to help them with their pain point. Reference your freebie and emphasize the value it brings. And then of course you wanna include a call to action. This is what email two looks like when you put it all together. I have a confession to make. It's regarding the first lead, mag I, lead magnet I ever launched. It was an Earth Day challenge and it flopped. Creating an effective email marketing funnel is not easy, but you're different. You're here with me and already know that creating a quiz is hands down the best way to feel confident in the in online world. Quizzes can and then share bullets on what they can do to help your audience. Um, and then check out how creating a quiz can help you achieve the results you're looking for by clicking here. And that Earth Day challenge I mentioned above was a true story. <laughs> It was the very first email or very first lead magnet I ever launched and it actually didn't go out and I was out of the country. And so I had to send it a week later, which Earth Day was over. <laughs> so if anybody has any fun stories about something that they did that didn't go off as planned, um, feel free to share it in the comments. But yeah, true story. It's hard. Lead magnets are hard. But once you get them working uh, and you have it all together, it's a pretty incredible. Email three is where you wanna build your relationship. You wanna ask, your ask yourself, what do your new leads want to know about me and share a relevant story to them? It's very similar to your about page. So in this email, you don't wanna just talk a lot about yourself. You kinda of wanna make it a point to bring it back to them and what do they wanna hear from you? What stories can you share that you've had success with that's gonna make them think that you are an expert. Um, so in, you can also share some random things like how you have a really big thumb or that you like Pinot Noir, those things you can add, but definitely add in street credit and uh, ways that you're able to help them have success. You wanna evoke emotion if you can. Again, people buy on emotions and engage your new leads with and encourage them to respond to your email with your call to action. Now, before we move on, I wanted to ask Jessmine, what would you write in your, your uh, about or your 
third email where you build your relationship and talk about you? I mean, I guess since I'm working for Interact, <laughs> as everyone knows, um, I always like to talk about my experience actually starting out here. So, and I always actually appreciate when I read someone's beginnings. So for me, I think it's more about like humanizing your business. So I would talk about how like I've been here for three years. When I first started, I was pretty much um, a fresh grad out of college. Um, you know, I wanted to step into the marketing world and I found this company and all that stuff. But I mean, if I were to own my own business and send an email, I'd probably talk a lot about my dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I talk a lot about how, um, you know, I lived in the city. I loved it. I was always thought I was a city girl, even though I grew up in a small town. Um, but yeah, stuff like that. I feel like that is kind of what makes it relatable, you know, is this part where it's like, Hey, this is who I am. And I want to get to know a little bit, you um, get to know you a little bit better as well. Exactly. And that's the thing with email. You don't have to keep it corporate you can personalize it and have fun with it share stories and that's something i really want to drive home for you to do today with yours so when you put email three together this is what it would look like have you ever been called the wrong name by someone i don't want that to happen to us so let's get to know each other a bit more you can list five things about yourself uh, some ideas are most embarrassing moment Share some credibility, where were you born, a nickname, a weird body part, past job experience, etc. And you can also um, so share that and then say, I would love to get to know you better. So please write back and let me know how you came across my business. And this gives your new lead an opportunity to engage with you and hit reply back. Now, engagement is huge on email, just like it is on social media you want to have an email list that's engaged with your offerings you want to actually grow up you want your email list to be a list of customers but also a list of engaged customers right so this is a great opportunity to ask them to give them some information back to you and what it does on the back end of your email provider is it when somebody writes back to you they're whitelisting you and when they whitelist you that means that they're telling their email provider that they want to get the emails from you. So that avoids spam folders. So when you have call to actions where you hit reply, those can really benefit your um, audience, but it also can benefit you as a business owner. Linda, we have, for, go ahead, Jessmine, sorry. I was gonna say we had a really good question. Um, Tanya asked, should these emails be different depending on their quiz result? Yeah, so typically, uh, well, it just depends on your offer, to be on, honest. Uh, I always work backwards from my offer. So if I'm only offering one thing, then most of the emails could be pretty similar, but you might wanna switch out that first email if you're doing a personality quiz. I did recently write a, a quiz for a client who had two offers. So we had five different results, but again, we kept it pretty simple and only two of the five personas received one offer where three of the five received another offer. So we did have to get a little bit more, um, we had to really cater it towards the audience. So it can be as complicated or as simple as you want it to. It just depends on where you're taking your new lead. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so email four, serve your audience with testimonials and tips. Start with a scroll stopping subject line that begs to be clicked on. Give your new lead a reason to be interested in your tip before you share it and explain why they want to take action on your tip and of course include a call to action. So what does this email look like? I have a quick tip that can help you with your insert the pain point that you um, learned on your ICA that you wrote about in email too. And share a relatable story about a client that had success with your advice. Here's the link to the tip. Include a testimonial that the client had success. Share an aha moment or a benefit that provides an ROI for your customer. So if you can get a testimonial that proves credibility for yourself and also helps your customer see that they're gonna get a return on investment when they uh, invest with you, you've nailed it. And I would love you to put it in this email. 
you obviously also offering street credit on why you're the expert when you've added a testimonial that's super powerful. Before signing off, ask your new lead to follow you on Instagram or join, join your Facebook group as the call to action. So what does this look like? Oh, oh, yeah, I just went over that. So we're back to email five. So email five is the last email you're going to write and you can ask for the business, believe it or not. A lot of people are really nervous about this step, but if somebody has read every single email and they've taken your quiz, believe me, they are still hot and ready to take the next step with you. So it's important to have confidence and ask them to take the step. So this is where you share a story by starting in the middle of the action. Empathize with them about their struggles, help them visualize how they can resolve it, provide a solution that'll make them feel confident to work with you, and present your offer. So what does this look like? I spent 40 plus hours working on my quiz, wearing the same clothes for days and eating stale popcorn for lunch to have my quiz up by the end of the month. And in just 60 days, I grew my list by 300%. The leads were coming in hot until I realized that all that effort was for nothing. I decided to forgo a nurture series and sent my new leads straight to my weekly newsletter. Can you relate to this? That's why I wanted to offer my Nurture to Net Welcome Series workshop so you won't make the same mistake. Click here and download it for just $97. So when you're talking about details in your emails, I kind of wrote this little um, blip here where I spent 40 hours working on my quiz. But what did that 40 hours look like? <laughs> I was wearing the same clothes. I was eating stale popcorn. I was really trying to get this sucker up by the end of the month, right? So get into the details. The details is where it's at. That's what's gonna make you memorable. And I thought that was a fun way to show details in an email. So now that we've written our five emails, a lot of people wonder, like how often do I send these? And a lot of people can do it multiple ways. I've heard people doing uh, an email the first and second day and then backing off on their third, fourth, and fifth emails and putting two or three days in between those. I've heard people waiting two or three days for every single email. But I specifically think that if you've written a quiz and you're here with Interact, that people are really, really excited to hear from you, especially after they've taken a quiz. So I highly recommend you send your five part nurture series um, every single day. And what this does, yes, it's a little intense, um, but the people who really wanna know more about your business are gonna get the information quicker. But what it also does is it gets the people who are not interested in your business off your list. Again, you wanna kinda just shed those hairs, get rid of those people because they are not for you, they would have never bought from you anyways. So if you took a quiz on Sunday, they would get uh, the follow-up emails. Uh, actually, they should get their results right away on Sunday, and then they would follow it up the next four days. So it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they would receive an email from you. Now, now that you've written your nurture series, you need them to open it up, right? So the next thing you need to focus on after you've climbed this mountain is your subject lines. So before your nurture series can influence a customer's buying decision, you must first get them to open it. So let's dig into the subject lines. So luckily I had the opportunity to learn from Laura Belgrade last year. I joined her shrimp club. She was my mentor. And if you don't know who Laura Belgrade is, she was uh, Marie Forleo's copy partner and copy cure. And she's amazing. And one day I had asked her in a Q and A, uh, more about how she gets people to open up her emails because last year she had an awesome year and she made over a million dollars by just email alone. So email works and this is her tips that she mentioned to me and that I want to share with you is write as you would to a friend. So I took her advice. I used a subject line and tested it out and the subject line I used was I almost tagged you on this Facebook post and then I added the name. So it'd be, I almost tagged you on this Facebook post, Jessman, and I had over 50% people open my email. That was a lot because I had a pretty big list back then. So I felt like that was a really, really good email subject line. The second one is fear of missing out. You should open this. 
gift inside. That one also, I believe, was in 40 to 50% open rate. So people really wanted to know what the gift was and they didn't want to miss out on something that might be beneficial to them. The third opportunity to uh, write a subject line that would help you get higher open rates is to pique curiosity. I actually got an email from Petco after I got my puppy and the email subject line said, you got paid. So I took that and I tried it out on a email and sure enough, about 50% open rate. Now I do want to mention, you don't want it to be clickbait. This email I did mention on ways to get paid. So it was relevant to the email. You don't want to use this against people because once people get tricked into um, clicking open, they, um, you know, if you do it too much where it's like clickbaity, that's going to ruin your reputation. But occasionally you can use something fun like that that's going to get a high open rate, um, but make sure it's worth it. And I felt like when I used it, it was really worth it for the emails. So I thought people liked it versus not liking it. Uh, Jessamine, do you have any uh, subject lines that you like to use or what, what, what ones have worked out in the past? Or if you guys want to share any of your subject lines, I would love to hear the ones that worked for you. I was actually going to say, Linda, that something that I learned from you actually was to make sure that if you do use like a fun or, you know, kind of out there um, subject line, you want to make sure that your email ties back to it somehow. So as they're reading, they're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, gosh, I feel like I, I had one, but we talked about open, open rates in the subject line, like yesterday. And now I can't remember what that one was, but you mentioned that you said workshop in it where you were really clear. That yeah. The that I think too, like for us, it's a little bit different because we're a software company. So I think, um, you know, people think like, Oh, software companies are like, you know, retail companies, companies in general will send like a lot of like spammy emails. So for workshops, if anyone remembers, I like was like, I need to be clear and say, this is a workshop mm -hmm. uh, or you're going to get a free training or yeah. something like that. Or like you're invited. Um, yeah. Things like that for us work really well. But um, I think one of my most open ones that I sent out was um, we actually had done a joint article with Active Campaign, and it was um, like a free resource for freelancers. And so my subject title was will all our freelancers please stand up and it had like 20%, which I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, and for us, like that goes out to literally everyone. And so our email list, that's a pretty good open rate too. Um, anybody comment? I would love to hear what's yeah. going on. Let's see if there's any comments too. Jen said, I've been seeing a lot of, I don't want to tell you this, but type of emails lately. That sounds like a little scary. Yeah. <laughs> I would be like, oh no, I, that's interesting. Jen, if you could actually comment in what, what was in the rest of the email, that would be, I'm like curious. I am, that does pique my curiosity, but it kind of gives me a little anxiety to be honest. Um, Kim asked, is it okay to open up the quiz to all customers? Do you want to answer that or do you want me to? I don't know. You can answer that if you want. Yeah, I actually, you should definitely open up your quiz to all customers. Um, what our quizzes work best for is for lead generation. So you want it to be a free quiz um, that opens up to all your customers and allows them to have like a personalized experience um, with your business. And then this email nurture series just kind of continues that relationship. Um, do you have anything to add to that, Linda? Yeah. You know, I, I do teach personality quizzes, so I'm very niche when it comes to quizzes. And I think it's important to uncover mm -hmm. everybody's personality that you can, especially if you're on a one-on-one -on -one call, because my expertise was in the pharmaceutical industry when I, was heavily taught on personalities. And when you know someone's personality, you know their buying decisions. So if you know that going into a discussion with them, it's very helpful. So for example, if I'm talking to a dominant person, they're probably ready to buy. They just wanna know options. They want me to get to the point. They don't want me sharing stories or testimonials. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's almost better to just serve up options for them and let them decide with what they want to do because they're probably going to pull the trigger on that pretty quickly. But if you are talking to the exact opposite personality, like a steady personality, 
that person wants testimonials. They're never going to buy from you um, until they've been loyal and watched you and really, you know, you have to earn their trust, but they won't buy from you until like two or three years. So if you know that going into as well to a call or knowing a customer, maybe you won't be so upset if you're trying to fill the spot, like your last spot on a mastermind or something. Um, but just know that you're serving them in a way that's going to support them. And um, you just, if you just make it about your customer and not about you, then it usually works out. So who knows? You just don't know where someone's at in their buying process. But the more information you can get, the better. The better it can be to help both of you guys leverage the conversation. Yeah. Okay, um, let's move on because we're almost done, you guys. Um, so the final steps of editing your welcome series. And I want to shout out Shanti Zach. Uh, she did share this with me and I much, much appreciate it because you want to edit your welcome series. So now that you've written it, you want to go back over it seven times and do these seven sweeps. What you're looking for the first time you go over it is to make sure you're clear and specific. Again, look at those subject lines. Are you clear? Are you being specific in the emails? Email, uh, sweep number two, make sure the tone is consistent. Sweep three, ask yourself, so what? Are you giving yourself a reason? Are you given a reason for the customer to care about you? Number four, prove it. There are analyzers out there who want to make sure you're backing up the claims that you're throwing out. So make sure you're adding links and backing up any type of claim that you have in your emails. Sweep number five, don't be vague, provide details, stale popcorn and all. And number six, evoke emotion. People buy on emotion, and that's another big reason why you need to get the emotions out of your ideal client avatar research, because you can really share those emotions that people are feeling, what's holding them back? How are they gonna feel when they actually write the quiz and are able to share the link? Share that information. And number seven, zero risks when you're making an offer. 50% of the personalities out there do appreciate low risk offers. So anytime you can share that you have a money back guarantee, that's gonna be really helpful for them. All right, we did it. Uh, we were able to get through this workshop today. I hope you guys learned a lot and you're able to crank out your welcome series, maybe, this, maybe today, I don't know. So 